This video is brought to you by Ground News. More from them in a bit. Now for anybody that missed my video on my other channel, here's a quick rundown of how reviews generally work. Studios and publishers allow reviewers to watch a movie or play a game before they, it actually releases. These reviewers are given time to write up their impressions and their opinions, and the final scores will go live once the review embargo lifts. Now, the review embargo is a date determined by the publishers or studios, and reviews cannot go out before this point. Now, there's a few reasons that these embargoes exist. Obviously, the most cynical reason would be to not let the public know if a product is bad beforehand. This is why if a game or movie has a review embargo that lifts just a day before release or a few hours before, that's a red flag. Because it means that the people who are selling this thing don't expect that the public will like it, and they don't want to give them any warning to cancel their pre-orders. But this isn't the only reason why a review embargo might lift right before release. Sometimes it's just to avoid spoilers. A team might not want any major story details leaking out right before launch day. Another reason review embargoes exist is actually to help the journalists. When it comes to reviews, or anything on the internet, timing matters. When all the reviews drop at once, each site gets a good opportunity to get some clicks. If nobody's early, then nobody can be late. Studios don't want reviewers to rush through a game just so they can get their review out first. I mean, imagine if embargoes didn't exist, any website would just post their uninhibited thoughts two hours after they got the game, because they want to be first. They, they want to get attention. But embargoes can cause some problems, specifically with video games, with long video games. For any game that's over 30, 40, 50 hours long to 100%, it's unreasonable to expect a reviewer to 100% that game in a week or two. I mean, it just is. Like, they might be able to spend all their time blasting through this game, but they're going to be rushing to finish the game, and their impressions aren't going to be the same as just an average person playing a game casually. But of course, not everybody even gets review embargoes. I mean, not everybody's under the review embargoes, because not everybody gets review copies. I don't get review copies. This is where conflicts of interest start to pop up. As I talked about in, again, my other video, there is nothing stopping a film studio or game publisher from just not giving somebody an early copy of a game or inviting them to an early film screening. And without special treatment, without early access, these websites can't get reviews out when everybody else is getting them out. Sure, they could wait until the film or the game is officially released and then write up their review, but they'll be so far behind that readers will have no reason to see the review, because they can just form their own opinions on the thing, because it's already out. Hey, Wimzu, I'm the Ground News Cow. I'm the Ground News Ground Beef. You ever notice how the news is garbage? Yes. Ground News takes a bunch of websites and slaps them into one easy to access. I should probably change my voice for the cow, right? Ground News takes a bunch of websites and slaps them into one easy to access place. You find out in an instant whether they lean politically to the left or the right or the center. And which places are accurate? Here, let me show you. That's okay. Really, that's okay. I'm, a, I'm in the middle of something here. Take this story! Taco Bell claims 50 state victory and battle to free Taco Tuesday! Apparently, before this point, like, small-ass restaurants owned the rights to Taco Tuesday? That's weird. And now they don't. So I can compare every take on the story. Every extremist political take on Taco Tuesday. This this particular story, not, nobody's really saying anything too spicy, ironically. But imagine, imagine if they were. You know how many stories are ignored by either side of the political spectrum? Sometimes they just leave out certain aspects of a story because... HYPOCRISY! PERSONALLY! Wait, no, I'm supposed to say this. This is a nice part. Personally, I do actually- I- I use Ground News every day. I actually do. I- I actually, actually- Has 50- gets news from 50 that wait, this is the cow's part. It gets news from 50,000 sources! News sources! It's good! Go to ground.news slash winzu to check it out, and subscribe through my link for as little as one dollar a month by subscribing to the- <coughs> <coughs>
<coughs> Either way, by subscribing to them, you are supporting my channel in the meantime. And all the amazing content that I put out. Quality. That's what we stand- that's what the- that's what the W in Wimzu stands for. It stands for quality. This conflict of interest warps just about everything in gaming journalism. Again, as I talked about in the other video. But I think this is best represented uh, in, in nerd culture, in geek culture, by popular esteemed postmodern artist group Red Letter Media. You might have seen their series The Nerd Crew. It's a satire, a social commentary on nerd culture and the symbiotic relationship between studios and influencers. Now, I don't think a lot of people realize that while this is like an amalgamation parody of several things, it's really specifically going after one website, one podcast, Corridor. I'm sorry, Collider. <laughs> I'm sorry, I get... I keep getting them confused. Collider is a website that gives almost every Disney movie like a 100 out of 100 on Metacritic. With a few exceptions, but like, come on. One of the hosts gets really angry on air because Disney didn't invite him to some theme park thing, I don't know. And he starts yelling about how he's been a Disney fan for all these years and this is how Disney chooses to repay him. It's, it's painful to watch because the implication is that he is He's, he's a shill, you know, he's shilling for this company because they provide him with VIP access to events, he benefits financially from whatever arrangements they have, and the mask slipped off. It was all a ruse. This was just third-party marketing. But it's a good example of how all these companies likely do operate. Not all the problems with reviews are caused because of big companies interfering with the reviewing process. It is more complicated than that. Because reviews are by their very nature subjective, but subjectivity, opinions, can be influenced by a lot of different things. If everybody liked the same shit, it would be like a cosmic nightmare. But sometimes people like the same thing for different reasons. Okay, so here's an example. In the classic TV sitcom Cheers, lead actor Ted Danson plays Sam, a charming ex-ball player turned bartender who all the guys at the bar look up to and all the women want to be with. Now, the actor Ted Danson would later talk about how people he'd approach in the street had two different interpretations of this character and the show itself. Some saw Sam as the ideal man that guys would want to hang out with and they would want to emulate. Like he was living the peak bachelor lifestyle, owns his own bar, has a large group of friends, and a new girl every week. But others saw the character as a parody or somebody to pity because he was an aging single guy who had coasted on his good looks and was now stuck as the lonely owner of a bar whose best friends were his own customers. Depending on who you asked, Sam Malone was either the protagonist of the show that you wanted to see win, that you wanted to live the life of, or he was the butt of the joke who would get his comeuppance by the end of every episode. These are two completely different groups of people enjoying the same show, the same media, for different reasons. Now, expand this idea to all media, the film, to TV shows, to games. This is one of the reasons why I and many others are against something like the numerical review system. Just putting a number on a, on a movie because it tells you nothing. It tells you absolutely nothing. Think of any review for any movie outside the typical Hollywood blockbuster. Even popular films. What score would you give a racer head? out of 10. What score does Taxi Driver deserve? Some people might say they're overrated, or some people might say 10 out of 10 guaranteed, or some people might say they're boring because they're not films made for everybody. Not everybody is going to love, or your, gram, your grandma, your grandmama is not gonna love Eraserhead. In my opinion, 10 out of 10s are not necessarily the mark of a perfect film or a perfect game, or even the best films or best games. I know some people say that it is as close to perfection as, as something can be, but I, I don't think that's true. Now this might come off as a bit pretentious, but I think the best art, usually is not going to be art made for everybody. I mean, it can't be, right? People are different. People have different experiences, different brains. People have different brains. 
And the deeper you go into any medium, the more time you spend experiencing media within that medium, the more your standards will increase. You'll start to notice the tropes, the cliches, and you'll start to, well, become pretentious. If you're a musician, if you listen to a lot of different kinds of music as well, and smaller bands and indie bands, and weird experimental shit or anything like that, go and check out the Grammy winners of the past decade. It is all the most broad appeal studio produced albums that will have like 30 names on it. Not objectively the best music, but it is the music that will have the most appeal to the largest number of people. Reviews aren't a great indication of, of much. Not even how well something will age or be remembered. Go back and look at the top scoring games of all time and the most acclaimed video games ever made aren't always the most memorable games ever made. Yes, you'll find your Mario 64's Breath of the Wilds, but there's also a lot of stuff you probably have never heard of. A lot of sports games, a lot of stuff that just probably doesn't seem like it should be in the top 25. A sports game fan reviewing a sports game by the standards of what a sports game was 20 plus years ago might have warranted a 10 out of 10, but by today's standards, it probably, probably doesn't, but because people liked it. The final point I want to talk about when it comes to reviews and why they're stupid is, uh, people. People are stupid. No, it's people are different, and I don't think people seem to consider this too often. If you're a video game reviewer, if your job is to review video games, to review a specific video game, your perception on that game is going to be different than somebody whose job is not to, to do that. If you have to play a new game every week and you're presented with a game that's designed to be played for 10 years, you know, like an MMO, some big ass RPG, I don't know, you're not going to be able to take it all in and you're not going to want to take it all in because you got other stuff you got to do. You got other games you got you to play. You, you are forced to play by the nature of your job. Some people just don't really have the time. If you work a 12 hour shift at some labor intensive job, I don't know. If you do that for 12 hours a day and you come home and you're, you're a little sleepy, a little tired, and you just want to play a video game, you might not be so inclined to drop into Fortnite and then get bodied by a bunch of Twitch streamers. Just by the nature of what you do outside of the game, the game itself might not be appealing to you. This applies to anything, to movies, to TV shows. A three-hour socio-political documentary might not be ideal for somebody who, who just got off work and wants a sense of escapism. You know, if you only have two hours of free time a night, maybe you don't want to watch an arc of One Piece that has Chopper just spinning around for, for 30 episodes. Like, how, how do you say that in a review? Like, oh man, this game would be so much better if I spent more time playing video games. Once again, Huge thanks to, to this week's sponsor, Ground News. Go check out the link in the description to get some good deals, some good fun stuff.